Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 24th of January 2021. Welcome to the service. I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you've been blessed. I hope that the heat isn't wiping you out. It's certainly giving me a ride for my money. But yeah, it's just nice. I, I must say, I really enjoy just being able to share these messages with you as much as I'd rather share with them share them with you face to face um, from the pulpit on a Sunday um, with fellowship and community. Um, yeah, fortunately we can still hear the word of God as we share together this morning. So for those that are watching, please enjoy the message and I pray that God speaks loudly and just clearly to you this morning that you know and feel his presence wherever you are. There's no notices this week, apart from please, just stay safe. We're not out of the woods yet. Um, look after yourself, look after one another. This morning I want to share a call to worship, um, just one verse um, from Proverbs 18 verse 10. And it says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Let me repeat that. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that we can meet this morning, albeit at a distance, albeit in our homes, wherever we are, Lord. We come this morning purely to worship you, to honor you and to glorify you. Our Lord, our King, our salvation, our rock, um, whatever term we use, Lord, just to express how we feel about this great God of ours, this amazing Lord and Savior. So all glory is yours this morning, Lord. We thank you for the week that it's been. We thank you for being with us in it and through it. And Lord, you are in all things, big and small. And thank you that we can trust in you, that we can walk in you. And thank you that you love us. Father, also we thank you for being safe, for being kind, for being just being able to encourage one another to walk together and to share your love. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus came and died for us, for the forgiveness of our sins, to set us free. Um, ah, Lord, I've just been listening to Lauren Daigle's song um, and how she just says, you know, we're sinners and we... We do these things, and it's hard to believe that you still love us um, and that you set us free. And that's the beauty of the cross. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting us free, washing us with the blood of the Lamb, so that, Lord, we may know the freedom, the joy, and the hope that is in you. So thank you, Lord. As we read your word, hear your message this morning, guide us, lead us, inspire us. Let us live in the hope that is promised. And may we glorify you in all things. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Psalm 62, third week in a row in the Psalms. Psalm 62, verses 5 to 12. Psalm 62, 5 to 12. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Low-born men are but a breath. The highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are a mere breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard, that you, O God, are strong, and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. Just that far, and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. <clears throat> Quite an interesting psalm, and Psalm 62 is one of David's psalms, and it focus on, focuses on trust. 
trust as the fundamental principle for David's relationship with God. Trust that forms the fundamental basis for our relationship with God. It's a psalm that asks us a question, a simple yet very, very deep question. Do we trust God? Is trust at the center of our relationship with God? Do we, you and I, trust God? David does, because his trust is based on confidence. The confidence that he has in God to come through for him every time. Time and time again, in good and in trouble. A confidence in knowing that God is with him at all times. A confidence based on knowing Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. We know it in the New Testament, Hebrews 13 verse 5. A confidence in seeing the bigger picture when it comes to God. David sees this picture of the greatness of God, his strength, his power, in spite of what is happening around him. David's life was tough. In fact, his, <laughs> his life always consisted of being in some kind of mess. Admittedly, some of it was his own doing. But there was so much malicious opposition against David. And yet he knew and he trusted in the fact that God's victory always lay before him. And that God would intervene. What about us? This is the challenging part of the message this morning. Do we believe that God's victory, not ours, God's victory lies before us? Do we believe, trust, that God will intervene? That God will come through in the end? Do we believe that God is fighting for and with us? So that being said, let's move on to the psalm. Verse 5 really struck a nerve with me this week. Um, like I said, I've been working through the Psalms and it's been quite rough and it's been great and all these sort of things. But verse 5 really just pricked me where I didn't want to be pricked this week. Um, and it starts with this, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. The reason why, probably allow me to share um, from my devotional journey where I wrote this this week. Peace, something that I don't feel at the moment, Lord. I am in my head, probably too much so, way too much, chasing ghosts and scenarios that I don't need to chase. So imagine when I read, find rest, oh my soul. Mm. My peace, my soul were disturbed. And then I remembered and I prayed. And I pray that we all do. We remember David's words. In God alone, my hope comes from him. In God alone. And those words just kept coming up. Find rest in God alone. Find rest in God alone. David continues with some amazing metaphors for faith. Metaphors that come from a deep, deep, deep connection with God. Something that comes from within inside, something within his conscience, his soul. And he uses these amazing metaphors. Like my rock. My rock. My mighty rock. Go and read the psalm again. It's, it's quite an amazing psalm. Psalm 62. My salvation. My fortress. My refuge. Remember Proverbs? Strong tower, my refuge. David continues, acknowledging in verse 7 that he's my hour, if you want, salvation and honor depend on God. But the crux also, another crux, another point that just jumps out of the psalm, is David pleading with us in verse 8. He says, trust in him. 
plea. I can almost imagine David sitting down on his knees pleading, saying, please, please trust in him at all times. Oh, people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. How cool. I, mean, I don't know. Let me not say cool because it's a, it's a, a time-specific expression. But how amazing is that? For me, it's cool. In my journal that evening, I responded, Lord, I am grateful that you are in my life. Thank you for the encouragement I receive, and the glory is all yours, Lord. You are holy, my rock, my salvation, and my strength, my hope, and my peace. Which raises another question for us. Who and what is God in our lives? Who and what is God in your life right now? Because, you know, if you look at David, you know, we know God says he's a man after my own heart and all this sort of stuff. But David never wavered in his faith. Yeah, all sorts of things happen and he moaned and he griped. But he never wavered in his faith, his conviction, his com confidence and trust in God. Nothing could shake him. Because God was on his side. In fact, Romans 8.31 <laughs> reminds us too, it says this, if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, now that's after David's time, but I mean, I think he could have said that pretty clearly. If God is for me, who can be against me? Because God always came through for David. God will always come through for us. The question is, do we trust God enough? Does our soul, our innermost being, stand firm on the thought that God is for us? Paul carries on to remind us that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You know, we might even have a different translation, more than conquerors through him. <laughs> yeah, um, he strengthens me. Uh, Romans 8.37, we are more than conquerors. I've mentioned this before, this journey, our faith walk, is not an easy one. It's, <laughs> there's no clear-cut path, there's no, I don't know, I want to say right or wrong, but it's a journey that each of us are on. And we wonder, and we go in and out, but God never leaves us, He always brings us back. This journey is a wrestle. But the amazing thing about wrestling is in the process we start to grow. So don't give up when things get tough. What's that saying from a movie? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. So don't give up on eternity. Don't give up on this amazing, amazing Jesus. He's worth the fight. Eternity is worth the effort. Maybe to use another cliche, nothing worth having comes easy. Because that's the truth. Anything worth having takes effort. So don't get discouraged when you, you're facing an uphill battle, as David says in verse 62. My soul finds rest in God alone. That's the answer. We can face the battles. We can do the hills. We can do the struggles. We can do the objections. We can do whatever comes our way because our soul finds rest in God alone. In verse 5, he says, my hope comes from him. My hope comes from Him. My hope comes from God. So in conclusion this morning, a short sermon. David ends with this encouragement in verse 11. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. <laughs> Listen carefully. One thing I have spoken, two things. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. That you, O oh God, are strong and that you, our Lord, are loving. And then the chorus just came into my head, Thy loving kindness is better than life. I lift my hands and praise your holy name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Go and read the verse 11 again. Maybe stick it on your mirror. It's beautiful. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. 
that you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. <laughs> so, in short, in God alone, I trust. In short, in God alone, we trust. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, just thank you for that message. I know it's short, but Lord, sometimes short is good because it just whacks at home. Lord, we can go through whatever we like. We can go through muddy waters, fire, deep river, whatever it is. Isaiah speaks of this. And all of this says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. All of this says you are fighting by our side. All of this says you are with us. And David leads the march. David stands up front and says, I know this. My life's a mess. My life's upside down and inside out and back to front. But I know God's got me. And God will deliver me from this. And that is why I trust in God. My rock, my redeemer, my salvation, my refuge. So Lord, thank you for that message of encouragement this morning. May we take it to heart. May we just grab it with both hands. And just acknowledge you, our great God, as our rock, our salvation, and our refuge. That we acknowledge your strength. And that we acknowledge your loving kindness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you are truly, 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 truly blessed. That you take such hope and such courage and such conviction out of this message this morning. Like I said, it spoke to me so deeply uh, when my soul was disturbed. Find your rest in God this week. And go in his name. Because he loves you. So I say to us all this morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.